tonight. Um, I know you've heard me in, uh, enough today, but in this capacity, uh, I'll be speaking as an election attorney as well as a political scientist. Um, here's the answer to the New York Times. The New York Times doesn't do actual analysis of polls. They don't do that in their paper. But they do concede that the exact same company, Edison Research Group, has total accuracy in predicting overseas. That is, we can overturn the Ukrainian election and other elections because exit polls, when done by Edison, outside the boundaries of the US, are absolutely accurate with their margin of errors. It's only when the universal laws of statistics are suspended on US territory are they meaningless. Same companies, same polling techniques. Our State Department uses it as red flags, not to certify, but when it happens here, we simply accept it no matter how implausible the numbers are. So all of them flunk my statistics 101 class. It's, it's absurd. Here, here's the fundamental quick lesson. And if some of you have already taken 101 statistics, right? Here's what they've been teaching since time immemorial, right? His mister, right? It, the acronym stands for, right? History. When you're doing polling, and I've done commercial polling, I apologize, some of it was for George Soros on marijuana, right? I've written reports, right? I've done survey research. It's, it's how I made money uh, on the side. But when you look at his mister, you start with history. When you're doing a survey, a poll, a tracking poll, and the numbers are off, uh, you say, did something happen, right? It's before, it's on Friday, did you know Bill Clinton have sex with three interns? Or there's some historical intervention that explains the Tuesday vote. Now, here's the pro, uh, the exit poll, right? There's no historical intervention. You vote, you walk out, you tell someone how you vote, right? You're not asking people how they're gonna vote. You're asking them why they're so accurate is how did you just vote, right? So historically, they're the most accurate polls. So if there's results that are coming out, you know, outside the margin of error significantly, these results, you work through the Hisminster. What's the I? They never get, the New York Times, all the news that fits, into its vision, right, never gets to the second test. The instrumentation, it's his mister. History, there's no history to really look at. I, instrumentation, it, like any science or social science, is your instrumentation recording accurately. How the hell would we know it's proprietary, it's secret, it's owned by partisan for-profit entities? How dare the New York Times or the Nation or any of them suggest that any of that is scientific? We have a non-functioning, non-transparent uh, democracy, right? And for these people to, uh, and for Nancy Pelosi to suggest that, oh, the exit polls are fine, I mean, she needs to step down. If she doesn't know basic statistics 101, get the hell out of politics. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, his sample, right? You then move down and go, well, let's look at our sample, right? Yeah. Is it representative? Is it done random? So you check your sample. Uh, implementation, did something go wrong? Your people outside the polls were smoking crack and missing voters, right? Is that, you know, you didn't get the question, who did you vote for for president? You didn't write it right. Uh, so that's the HISMI. And then, of course, as you go down uh, to the survey, right? That survey question. It's not difficult to say, who did you vote for for president? That's, you're not messing up there. Or technical problems, right? 
Did you not add up your numbers correctly? Did you leave data out? So, uh, and as you move, is there some type of random error that occurred? And finally, did you not record the numbers wrong? Did you put something down that was off? Here's the problem, is in the US, we never get to uh, step two. We never get to checking the instruments because they're uncheckable, undemocratic, uncheckable, non-transparent. So that's why I sued Edison, right? My, uh, I have a paralegal and I have another lawyer in my law firm. So I sued and as much as I love Pete and the DNC, I did it on behalf of the Green Party, which I created. Why? Because the Green Party says yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Democrats don't. Not, a lot of my money uh, over the years has come from progressive Democrats, bless them. The ones that disagree with their party that won't challenge these issues, right? So I sued Edison Research Group. Here was the basis of that suit. Many people have asked me. Uh, it was Johnson, Pete Johnson, uh, a member of the Franklin County Green Party versus Edison Research Group. And here's what I argued. I argued that Edison Research Group is a state agent. It's an agent of the state. Why? Because it exists primarily to peddle bad, implausible numbers and not to reveal its methodology for endorsing unscientific bad numbers as accurate. They are in collusion with the Secretary of State's office. Right, that's go what's going on, they're in collusion. Right, they get special treatment outside the polls, they share data together, and when the numbers come in, and it looks like, you know, Kerry's winning 51-48, and of course, the computers go down and the vote count goes out to Chattanooga, Tennessee, at a server farm for Republicans, the numbers come back, they're completely reversed. It's absolutely unlikely, not likely to occur, you know, in uh, one in 800 years or so. What happens, what does Edison does? It says, let me wait and adjust the numbers. So this looks absolutely impossible. I'm gonna adjust the numbers because we're gonna accept whatever the official numbers are even if a county like Miami County has admitted they got 2,500 at least cyber votes, even if there's missing in Warren County, right, even if Warren County comes in with 10,000 unexpected votes, all one punch for Bush, you know, uh, they'll say, look, they had a level 10 Homeland Security alert. Bin Laden was walking through the city riding on a camel in Warren, Ohio. They had to seize all the ballots for protection, right? So they just accept the official number, no matter how implausible. And then when you ask, as we did in 04, 56 of the 88 counties tell us what? We destroyed, the evidence is destroyed. I mean, I was there when we got the bad news from Holmes County. It was, you know, a county where they claim old order Amish leaped into their bu uh, buggies right before the close of polls, whipped their horses, uh, raced to the polls, 10,000 that weren't expected to vote. And here was the tragedy, is somebody had been making coffee in the voter vault, which is protected by two keys, Democrat, Republican. You need two people to open it. Apparently the cost of coffee was so expensive, they were build they had a big one in there, like a 12 copper. It fell and destroyed 20,000 ballots. <laughs> and with their Amish, they hadn't heard of the technology known as the towel, where you kind of mop it up. <laughs> right? And then the tragedy in Youngstown, Ohio, and I, you know, I don't care what the Sopranos said. You know, they're only allegedly mobsters. When Waste Management Inc. went in and somehow had both keys and took every ballot and recycled them because they're green, that's a mistake. That's the implausible things we must accept to accept these weird numbers that Edison Research Group 
is colluding with the Secretary of State. And the numbers are only weird in the battleground states, right? Perfectly in the red states and the blue states, perfectly accurate. Uh, and they'll say, well, you know, Wisconsin's diverse and complex. Okay, you can get California at 0% wrong and Texas, which seem like diverse states to me, but you can't figure out Wisconsin? Okay, and finally, the, the other uh, lawsuit uh, I brought in Ohio, right? I, I requested all the information from the primary because it didn't look right to me. You know, the exit polls were 10 points uh, uh, off. You know, Bernie was supposed to get more votes. He was supposed to lose, but not that big. So I requested, you know, can I look at all the county with ballot images? 14 of them write me and say it doesn't exist. And I'm like, it has to exist, right? You've got these scanners, you've got audit logs and ballot imaging. Well, in Ohio, apparently you turn off your security, your audit logs and your ballot imaging uh, because you want it to be used for write-in only, right? So the default setting, the way it operates is to make a copy, an image of every ballot. They were turned off in 14 counties, many of those counties with suspect votes. And when I sued, I went in and said, you know, this is, this is wrong. They bought a state-of-the-art system with security on it. I was told that I was impugning the integrity of the Ohio voting system. And I said, pardon, have you heard of Ken Blackwell? <laughs> have you heard of an open liar and thief that used to be the Secretary of State? How am I impugning the integrity or me and my fellow election activists, we're not the problem. We're the solution. So let me leave, my, uh, leave you with that, you know. We're the solution, we know what's wrong, and we're gonna win this because transparency is the issue, accuracy is the issue, and ultimately we're fighting over the salvation of democracy in this country. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> no, but I didn't get sanctioned, which for me. <laughs> uh, and let me tell you just one brief, uh, one brief story on being sanctioned with, with Pete. Uh, Pete and the three other attorneys, uh, two others actually, Susan Truitt and Cliff Harnebeck, uh, when we were going forward uh, to sue in 2004, uh, no, we didn't uh, get sanctioned, but they tried to sanction us. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, you know, why don't you cut a deal? No federal suit, which was filed afterwards and other stuff. Uh, but part of my job was to go, I came out to California. Gore Vidal flew me out, right? Uh, and Deborah Bowen, I, I spoke with in a church down in LA. And, uh, you know, you come out and people are, uh, you could tell people were afraid, right? They were going to fine us a lot of money, and they were going to take my law license. I'm a college professor. I mean, uh, Pete had far more at stake and was much braver uh, uh, than I was. But uh, I remember my approach when I came out. I could feel the tension in the, uh, the room, and people there were really trying to be helpful. And, you know, I, I told him, like, I, I really shouldn't talk about this. I've been advised not to. So this is all I can say to Ken Blackwell right here. It's my free speech right because come and sanction me. Then we'll get a hearing on the actual facts, which Pete had done a tremendous job, you know, with just reams, tons of paper and evidence that would have proved they stole the election in 2004. Now they're serial, you know, stealers. Uh, they're out there, they're robbing, they're looting, and it's only getting worse. So. Uh, Again, uh, you know, I, I invited the sanctions, and of course they were dismissed, but uh, as soon as you said we have to have a, uh, a hearing. Go ahead. Hi, one quick last question. Did these statistical discrepancies come up? Did these statistical discrepancies come up in 2008 and 2012? Uh, yeah, but they were, um, a, a couple things happened uh, in those years. For example, um, 
uh, while Ohio was important in other areas, uh, my firm, it wasn't Reuters who did it in 2016. In 2008, we requested all uh, purged, deregistered voters in Ohio. The number in Ohio alone was 1.25 million. 1.25 million uh, voters. Uh, of course, overwhelmingly black and Hispanic and poor. In the 2004 election, they had purged 24.96% of every single voter in Cuyahoga County, where Cleveland was. And they purged them in an off year, which was against protocol uh, in our state. And many of these people were purged uh, legally, right? Black soldiers fighting in Iraq got letters saying, we don't believe you are who you are. So they could come back from Iraq to protect their voting rights, but apparently the military wouldn't, wouldn't let them. The military did intervene after that. They were, you know, the military brass was very upset that black soldiers were being purged in Cleveland, Ohio. So in, in 2008, um, literally, uh, we had these numbers and we published them and Donna Brazil sort of uh, was heard saying, could this be true? Could there be that many? you know, deregistered voters, and uh, she was uh, assured that that was the truth. So I, I made all of that data available at the institute at my house at 1021, and the only people who showed up, one group called ACORN, which took it and went door to door and re-registered just tens of thousands, and the other one was the Obama campaign, who secretly was meeting regularly, virtually, you know, uh, they had an attorney from, uh, I won't mention his name, but we named a room in the house after him, a suite, uh, from, the, the, from New York City. He was in charge of Newark, Ohio. He resigned from the campaign and then asked me if he could live in my house and spent <laughs> all the time going through the data and re-registering voters. So as much as the Obama campaign was cool on the surface, they were actually massively worried about Ohio and other states, about the voting machines, and particularly about these massive purges, deregistration uh, of voters. And, and they were doing this legally in part by saying an election cycle used to be eight years, right? It used to be presidential uh, midterm, presidential midterm, eight years to deregister. They turned it into two elections, a primary and a general election. So. They said that was a, elect and it was up to every county. So the Republican counties purged heavily uh, when it came particularly to black voters. Jim, I'll go ahead. I don't have a question. I appreciate your passionate speech, but it's been suggested I make, well, two announcements. One, we apologize for the heat today. There was some kind of mix up with the city of Berkeley that runs this facility. They do, however, deny that this has anything to do with global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Better news, I checked the press release from Governor Brown's office today. He is still not acted on AB 840. All right. All right. Last question. Okay. So, uh, Peter, sorry, you're. Your presentation, oh, oh, thanks. Your presentation, all those great slides, are they on a website? Yes. Uh, they, will you, you know, tell which website? Yeah, it's at, uh, take a look at the website, peter4dnc.com. Peter, the number four, okay. numerical, dnc.com. There's a research tab. And if you look at that research tab and start scrolling down the research tab, uh, you'll see uh, a, a chart from 2016, under it there's a box which says learn more, and there's a chart on the other side from 2004, which was also shown, box under it that says learn more. Click on either the chart or the learn more box, and all of these slides are going to pop up. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Bob, the, um, I forgot, I had a fair <laughs> amount of statistics, but it's been so many years, so there, each in the exit polls, they were done at a 95% confidence right. level, so that means 5% chance that they were wrong. Do you, mul is it multiplicative? That is, there's three states that had within the margin of error this uh, happen. 
uh, do you multiply to say that it happened in three states? Is it 0 0.5, 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 times, oh, times 0 0.05? 0 .05. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. It is, well, okay. That's got nothing to do with the 95%, but, it, but, it, but it, the question is, you see all these unlikely events, and right. then the question which you're asking is, okay, here, we got one event which we could expect once every right. 72,000 years and another one once every 2,400 right. years. And what would it take for all five of them to happen all at once? Yeah, that, that's right. a much smaller probability. Okay. So, yeah, there are people who do that. I haven't done it here. But, yeah, but you could link them. Okay. We, we did right. that in 04. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you, I mean, you, the numbers you, become, like, in 04, there, there's 12 battleground states. Wisconsin has same-day voting. And the other 11 states, all of them were outside the margin of error. So it's like you're hitting the super lotto, the traditional lotto, the Powerball, all on the same number. So at a certain point, the number gets so absurd, yeah, because it's, uh, you know, uh, 95 times out of 100 elections, they're going to fall within that modern, uh, margin of error. But the other interesting thing, they all, they all fall on one side, right? All 11 of them fell in probably for Bush. None of them for Kerry. So you would think if it was bad methodology, they'd be making some mistakes on both sides. Same thing happened uh, in the primary where all the mistakes uh, are hurting Bernie. And in the general election, all but one state where the vote counts off in New York. In, th in 13 of those states, you know, one's New York. That there's more votes in Hillary than expected, but she still would have won overwhelmingly. The rest are all... Uh, for Trump. So when, when the error appears to be non-random, we should even look closer. Thank you. Lori. <laughs> uh, Lori Grace from Trust Vote. Um, I just want to again affirm my support of your passion and your actions. And I, I want to also be seen that we did a partnership in terms of challenging Edison Media Research and you always yeah, yeah the, to be clear Lori paid for the uh, I didn't take legal fees but all of the cost of the case including the my paralegal uh, Lori paid those costs the case wouldn't have happened without her and thank you and and I just want to say that it's really important that we bring up these issues of funding and we also had people contributing small amounts through trust vote Org, which I'm very happy for, and that and many other actions that we've taken together. So I just want to really support the creation of, cle of clear funding options to support these things. And, and you don't always ask for the kind of support. And so I just want to make sure that we do it together and that we make it happen. Okay, again, yeah, Columbus you. Institute for Contemporary Journalism. Uh, I, I fund virtually every uh, major uh, voting operation. Uh, Mark Crispin Miller, for example, and a variety of op-ed news. Uh, well, we've been around since 1986, so we actually have the skill set uh, not to end up in jail, and we know how to uh, count money. Uh, NVR, uh, TF National Voting Rights Task Force.org, that's putting on this event, and uh, uh, Pekarsky's uh, uh, great work with with numbers and also trust vote, uh, which really you know uh, brings me out. Uh, so you know, uh, I was so in debt after 2004. I learned not to use my credit card, uh, uh, even if they're really good public hearings in five locations. Uh, it's almost paid off. But uh, I've continued my work because of Lori Grace. Thanks, and also let's remember that trustvote.org is is a uh, nonprofit. So larger donations become tax deductible, tax deductible. for educational right. initiatives right. like supporting voter integrity. Yeah, you know, and so voters is the and election integrity. Trust vote so. and NVRTF, uh, all I assume nonprofits. So thank okay. you.